Welcome to our review on the structure of the Earth. So first thing we need to understand then is what actually makes up the Earth itself. Now what we actually got are four main parts that we should remember and you can see those in the diagram on the left hand side there. The very outermost part is the crust, inside that we've got the mantle and then we've got the core which is made out of the outer core which is a liquid and the inner core which is a solid. One thing to bear in mind, when we talk about the crust, we're talking about that rocky surface that we're actually able to move around on. When we think about the core, we need to remember that that does contain iron. Now, obviously we do know that this is a structure of the Earth to our best understanding, but we do have some problems with studying that structure directly. First one is that the crust is actually too thick to drill through. So what we're talking about is something that we couldn't actually use our own drills that we've got today to drill down deep enough to study all the way through. And the other one is that we've got some parts that are too hot for our scientific instruments. So if you imagine the fact that things like the mantle and the outer core being liquid, then what we find is that's incredibly hot. So our scientific instruments would just be melted. We do have some solutions, and this is how we've actually got this understanding of the structure of our Earth. First one is that we're going to use seismic waves. So what we can actually do there is either use earthquakes, which produce seis seismic waves naturally, or we can have explosions that create seismic waves and then we can just look and see how they travel through the earth itself and that gives us an idea about what bits are solid and what bits are liquid. So we've got another word here that we need to know the meaning of which is the lithosphere. So whenever we're talking about the lithosphere we're talking about the crust and the outer part of the mantle and by the outer part we mean the bit closest to the crust. Now the lithosphere itself is relatively cold and it's quite rigid and it's also broken up into large parts called tectonic plates and you can see those tectonic plates in the diagram on the left there okay the yellow lines give us the boundary between them so literally these tectonic plates make up the entire surface of our planet and they are constantly moving they move at about two and a half centimeters a year so they're moving slowly but they are moving and the reason they can move is that they're actually less dense than the mantle so that means they float on top of it. So what we find as the reason that these tectonic plates are able to move then is all to do with the mantle itself. So up near the crust then the mantle is actually relatively cold and quite rigid but as we go deeper down towards the center of the earth then the mantle gets hotter and therefore less rigid and so what we see is it's able to flow slowly as a result of this, where we've got one bit that's hotter, the other bit that's cooler, we get convection currents being set up. And as those convection currents move, then the tectonic plates which are on the surface of that mantle also move. If we look at the different types of tectonic plate we've got, then we have two types. We've got oceanic plates and we've got continental plates. Now the key difference here that we need to remember is that the oceanic plates are denser than the continental plates. So what we actually find then is at those margins with the oceans, then the oceanic plates will cool. And so that if they collide with a continental plate, the cooler oceanic plate is going to be pulled under the continental plate, as you can see in the diagram on the right there. And this is a process called subduction. So what we then find is as that oceanic plate is pulled under the continental plate, then the actual oceanic plate begins to melt slightly and that's where we start to see things like volcanoes occurring. So do remember that the oceanic plates are denser than the continental plates so that they go under the continental plate at those margins. Because the tectonic plates are moving then we can get some problems associated with that. The first one is an earthquake. So what we find is that earthquakes will happen because of the movement of those tectonic plates. We'll also have a second problem of volcanoes where those plates meet. So what we find is that with our volcanoes then molten rock or magma is able to get to the surface through the weak spots in the crust and the reason that magma actually rises to the surface is because it's less dense. 